Coming up on Oily Trash Movies. Oh, look at her melting face. Uh, it's so disgusting. Oh, there she is now. Yeah, I saw him tweet about it. Hello, we're live and welcome to Oily Trash Movies. Are you serious? The only podcast. Are you like really, are yes, you re Bobo. really recording? No, like for real. This is the only podcast. <sighs> Where Bubble falls for the same bit every single time. Actually, she she might be acting. No, I really, I wish I could say that. It's genuinely, like, he tricks me. He does it a couple times where he's like, and we're live. And I'm like, are you serious? He's like, no. <laughs> I wish. Yeah, it's true. I do, I do. It's it's a whole big bait and switch that I do on Bubble yeah. But as you all know, or if you don't know, if you're just tuning in, if you've just subscribed because you saw our unbelievably viral short that went out uh this is a podcast where two people watch a movie and say unfunny things the entire time we're your hosts i'm daddy warbucks and i'm bubba gum barbie and this is actually the seventh bonus episode we've done but i think if you're watching this this is actually only bonus episode five or six because not all of the bonus episodes survived mm -hmm. the cutting room floor unfortunately but if they had uh, the last movie we watched was Babezilla versus the Zombie Horde. Oh my god. And that was... You know what? I think... On, on retrospective, I think that movie was better than we gave it credit for. You know, it's a movie of... It's a movie that... Where people get a camera and make a movie. That's the type of movie it was. Shot on, yeah, shot on video, just a couple guys in their or their mother's trailer filming a movie. And that's all it was. That's all I have to say <laughs> about Babe Snilla. There was a scene, again, if, like, for those, if, if this episode didn't make it live, there's a scene in which a woman shoots a laser beam out of her vagina and blows up zombies. Oh my god, I'm gonna cut this. <laughs> Listen, if they're not going to get to see the episode, we have to at least tell them what they missed. Well, okay. It, it is... I liked the beginning title credit where it says, like, do not watch this, if blah, blah, blah. And if you do watch this, hide it under your mattress. And the one thing I did say with that episode, which it's not going to come out ever. It's like we were saying that it, sh it shouldn't have came out. <laughs> like, these guys shouldn't have made this movie. They should have just recorded it on their VH VHS and left it in their house and said, I made a movie. And showed it to their friends who came over. Like, check out, do you want to see the movie I made? What? No. Like, yeah, you do. There's naked chicks right. in it. Right. Like, okay. That released it on the internet uh, because it was that bad. I also feel terrible reviewing it because, again, it's an indie film. It is just guys getting together with their VHS, with their video camera, and making a movie. It had babes in it, it had dudes in it, and it had trailers, and it had houses, and it had cornfields, and it had uh, smoking bushes for some reason. There was a an abandoned Target parking lot. No, it wasn't Target. It was Toys R Us. Or, uh, Toys R Us. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was Toys R Us. It's a video that... Like the quality of it feels like something that would just get uploaded to a YouTube channel. Right. And and because of that, I because it's so indie, so low budget, I don't think it qualifies for R V views. Even not even the bonus episodes, which are the most low budget yeah. of low. Yeah. Which speaking yeah. of the most low budget of low, this is Wigwoof's The Wizard of Oz. And I don't know it this this gentleman, Wigwoof. I'm assuming that's not his real name. That's all he goes by on Twitter slash X, and that's what he's credited as on IMDb. Uh, you know, we've watched a lot of movies that we've described as fever dreams. This gentleman's style is 100% fever dream, and this guy might actually be legitimately insane. Well, I'm gonna cut that because that's rude because he's probably gonna watch this. You're gonna you're gonna cut the part where I called him crazy? No, I've literally tweeted at him. I'm like, this is the <laughs> most insane Twitter account that I follow, and he liked it and retweeted it. So he's on board. Okay. He's totally in on the All joke. Right. Like, this, this dude knows that what he's making is something that uh, people probably watch while they're on drugs. 
This is, I think this is, it, it might be a second or third movie. He made another movie called The Wet Ones, which I had wanted to uh, do a review on just because I knew that uh, he was following us on Twitter and sort of interacting with our account. But it was two and a half hours. And let me tell you, Mr. Wigwoof, that is too long of a movie. But I did watch some of it and it looked like a crazy nightmare fever dream. And then his new movie, The Wizard of Oz, which should be releasing on the day that this episode comes out, 9-11. So if we hate this movie, uh, we can make great jokes about what a, what a national tragedy is occurring. But this is only 51 minutes, which is perfect. Yeah, so he, I'm looking at the IMDB here, and he also acts in it, and I'm excited to see this. I, I'm really excited. This this seems like a movie that I'm really into. He's he's credited as the voice of Scrizzle Scrazzle, so I don't think we're going to get to see him. No. Uh, in the movie, but I, I, like, I've looked up this guy. I don't, like, he is just... He's a mystery. I don't know anything about this person. He could be multiple people. Uh, I, I asked them. I was like, do you have a press junket for this? Or like, are we just going to raw dog this? Because I, you know, I wanted to be like, oh, this is going to be debuting on Tubi, on such and such. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Uh, I believe The Wet Ones is available on uh, Amazon Video was where I was watching it. So this might be coming to streaming services. If not... Uh, it's it comes out on it's available on DVD. We'll put it in the description. It's on kunaki.com/sales. Like uh, who know? Like where this shit comes from? I've got no clue. Well, here he has a little bit of trivia. Like uh, it says during the production of Wigwoof's the, uh, the Wizard of Oz, the director Wigwoof was the target of a massive online harassment campaign launched by the prominent member of the horror community and editor of the famous horror magazine. Oh, I missed all of that during my time on Twitter with him. Would you like to read the storyline of this movie so people know what we're getting into? Okay, so it is The Wizard of Oz. Get ready for a severe adventure of a lifetime with The Wizard of Oz. Join one and only Arlie Panelanes as Dorothy as she sets out on a quest of self-discovery and redemption in this spectacularly severe Catholic adventure in grace. That word that you pronounce as severe both times is called surreal. This is a surreal, surreal a surreal movie, which it looks like it. It looks like uh, it's it's got like a color palette as though the saturation is cranked to a thousand, mm -hmm. uh, giving it a look of like an old VHS tape where everything's like purple and green, which is apparently Wigwolf's style. I'm excited. Like I, when we were watching the trailer for this, as soon as I saw it, I was intrigued. I was excited. I was inspired i get sort of robotica destructive vibes from this mm -hmm. just in the, the sense of how stylistic it is whether or not he it, they pull it off and put together something else that uh, is is truly art right. we're gonna find out are we ready let's go hello hello, hello? all right it, it already sounds like us So yeah, we've got all the VHS effects of uh, distortion and graininess. 1010 10, spaghetti hair. Uh, it's like the eyes are like cut out. Oh, wow. This is already great makeup. Well, is this even a person or is that like a mannequin? Yes, it has to be. It has to be Dorothy. And I think it is a person wearing a mask. Okay. Yeah, that could be. Uh, it looks like latex over the eyes. The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> By Scrizzle Scrazzle. I'm already in love because that is a Barbie. I love this film. <laughs> you you can see the shadow of the camera on her. Mushroom people. Oh hell yeah, bubblegum! Oh, that looks good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like her, her regular hair is just coming down out from underneath the wig. I love that. Yeah. <gasps> Oh my gosh. No. <laughs> this is a pretty weird movie. Again, this is how I play with my Barbie. <laughs> it's like the scene from Robotica Destructiva where they're playing with the action figures. Yes. 
Oh, this is Toto. <laughs> Hi. Arf, arf, arf. I'm the bad doggy of the woods, and I play mind games with people. <laughs> Look, it's you, War. Arf, arf, arf. I think I'm cutting That's that. Right. <laughs> I'm Toto the puppy dog. Arf, arf, arf. <laughs> he's, he's reading the script. Yeah, you. it's sorry, been bothering sorry, me, okay? and I was gonna save it until the end. What was that? You must face punishment! <laughs> Oh, what a wild, what a wild. It would be great if they, like, made a whole bunch of green slime and, like, had her melting. Oh, they're doing it! She's melting pretty good. Yep. Damn, that was some pretty strong orange drink. I believe that was a picture of Wigwoof in the background for a split second we saw. Oh, look at her melting face. Uh, it's so disgusting. Oh, there she is now. Oh, there she is. Nothing but... Ver Ver what's that word? Ver Versala? It's the Wicked Witch. No, like, uh, Versala? When it's just, like, stuff, human flesh? Oh, Viscera. Viscera. Nothing but Viscera. <laughs> Nothing but Ursula. Dorothy was raised in the Oz So she's tradition. devastated because she killed she the, the bad witch. Herself. Yeah, but she she threw she the shit herself. in her face. <laughs> she's literally self-flagellating right now. Where'd she get the whip? Again, there's like, I guess there's like a, a pandemic of just fighting rope and whips in the forest. Wait, where, where'd that rope come from? Old puppy. <laughs> So this feels like a very art house steeped in <laughs> metaphors and symbolism type movie. I yeah, I love it. I love it. He's a very good actor if he bothered to memorize the script and read it. I definitely think Dorothy is a stronger lead than this gentleman. What's the point of not making any more mistakes in the future? Can you tell me? It feels like this script was put into Google Translate into another language and then translated back into English. <laughs> this is like a movie made by Pepe the Frog. <laughs> oh, there's a there's the dog dick. Christ. We need Aunt Mom in here to, to say a prayer. <laughs> We should have watched the original Wizard of Oz first to... Reference it? <laughs> yeah, so we can compare and contrast the two. <laughs> I mean, I obviously like this one more. Got knife on my blood, shit on my dick. It's as good as our Gotta theme songs. The <laughs> Welcome to the 90s. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, she was wearing really yeah, 90s yeah. pants in that scene where she killed the witch. Did you notice that? I didn't. It's hard to tell if this movie's just a bunch of random shit, or if there really is some sort of whole, complete creative vision behind it. I'm gonna go that there's a whole creative vision. It's a creative vision of a uh, tripping acid, <laughs> where it makes sense. I do like this song. <laughs> Knife on a lawn, shit on my dick. You better ask Wigwoof if he, if he could send us that song. That way I could just play it for my pleasure. I'm gonna ask Wigwoof to send me a, an autographed copy of this DVD. Yes, please. Ask him for two. No. Oh my gosh, you are so mean. I literally edit <laughs> everything and I do the shorts. Well, you know what? If you didn't shit on my edit so much, if you stop making fun of my edit, I, you are, yeah, no, no Wigwoof. You know what? I'll just ask him you, myself. Then. You know, wait, Wolf. Please send me a autograph of your DVD, and then also she can't afford it. She's some, broke. And then also some bubble gum that you had on your set, and maybe a, a set piece that you have in this movie would be great. Wig Wolf, I want you to send me the actress who played the Good Witch, please. This is like the exact kind of bizarre, like. <laughs> Shit, that I, that would be honestly right up my alley. This is great. Really? Okay, I I thought Limpy was gonna hate this movie. I thought so too. It, it, you know, I have been so well entertained throughout this entire film. That's why I haven't been talking. I've actually been like paying attention. <laughs> okay. Impressive. Surprising. 
mistaken. You will no longer Big Wolf, can you also send me a copy of your script signed by the cast? I would Perhaps greatly appreciate it. Hey, hey, Wig Wolf, will you send anyway. me your firstborn? Can I get your left sure testicle too, please? Oh, she's got a, she's got her smartphone. The witch has the smartphone in her hand. <laughs> That's probably where the script is that she's been reading. <laughs> You're probably right. Oh my God, he's a basis. Hot. Wig Wolf, please send me uh, the dog actor. Oh man, I, I wanted to see the reflection in that guy's glasses to see if I could see Wig Wolf. This movie is fantastic. It almost seems that the, this is a different actress. It could be. She speaks English better. I love that um, effect. <laughs> Pulling the cockroach with fishing line. Yes, I love it. I want that Barbie doll. No, too late. I already asked. I already asked um, Wig Wolf to send it to me. Yeah, but you're not offering Wig Wolf any money. You're broke, Bubble. Yeah, so like and subscribe to Oily Trash Movies so I can get ad reviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to be sponsored by Sh Raid Shadow Legends so that we can buy a Wig Wolf's Barbie props. I have officially lost the plot. Uh, what could I have that you guys possibly want? Your virginity. Wig Wolf should have hired one of the robots from the Killer Robots to play the Tin Man. Oh, yeah. When he said her stomach, he actually meant her colon, so he's gonna just make her sh the bed again. <laughs> this this movie is an allegory for uh, A, Nazis, and B, a Toto is Johnny Depp, and Dorothy is a That's what I'm getting from this movie. What a great spaghetti party. <laughs> this is lit. <laughs> I always play carnival music at my spaghetti parties. Next, yeah, me too. You do that too? That's crazy. Yeah. So next time I have a spaghetti party, I'm going to play this. I'm just going to add this movie in the background. Well, what you should do is have make it a spaghetti costume party where everybody dresses up like characters from The Wizard of Oz. So, I'm assuming, so is this Dorothy paying her penance now? <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna puke. This is. Uh, I know. We'll see. So, this is Wizard of Oz on acid going to Aunt Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is her putting everything in her shoes a sign of like psychological just craziness? It's really weird. Ah, uh, man. That's a, that's a good question because that is a motif. And she was putting the rocks in, and it kept doing those cuts to, like, just the close-ups of the shoes, sort of weeping blood out of them. And it's like, okay, like, I read that as a penance, like, and, and she was self-flagellating. So I think that putting something in her shoes is to subject herself to discomfort, to try to atone for her sins. Also, it's a thing in Wizard of Oz, she taps her feet to go home. With her shoes. Oh my gosh. No, this is a Dorothy, Catholic no. No, allegory. No, you're being a maniac. She's a maniac, maniac. Oh no. And now we're copyright struck on that song. No. She pours acid into yeah, her eyes. I wish Aunt Mom was here to watch this film with us. She would understand the Catholic, like, messaging here. The witch represents original sin. I don't know, I almost feel like this might be an allegory for gaslighting because the puppy dog seemed to be a very a partner. Oh, the end. Uh, this is the end question mark. That's it, that's it. Well, geez Louise. Is this about s side? It is. I guess so. Help is only a call away. And I'm a Catholic, so I'm in hell now. Well, s side is like the number one sin according to Catholics. Yeah. I find it hilarious that you literally just told me that we can't talk about s side on the podcast, and it turns out this entire movie near the end was about s side on our podcast. Yeah. Well, I, listen, just so you know, every time you say s side, we have to bleep it. So you're creating more work for us, Lippy. We have to call it 
game ending. I'm so glad that I'm not editing this bonus episode and you are. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. That was Wigwoof's The Wizard of Oz. I feel like I just walked three miles across broken glass. Bubble, yeah. what were your first impressions of this movie? So, exactly what I said. I was excited because I felt like this was going to be a very art deco film type uh, student film art that you don't really see anything besides full creative in film school. And I appreciate this. Yes, I lost the plot. There was a lot for me to take in, but I also love the fact that I could go back if I like and watch this multiple times and try to see what what it's the story that it's trying to tell me. And visually, it was wonder wonderfully made. There was that one part where we saw the crew guy. I wish I wish he was conscious of his shadow. On that, but other than that, I think it was really good. There was also, uh, I had a bother in the dog where he was reading the entire script. I, I wish, I hope that it was intentional and not a guy who di didn't even bother to read the script and showed up and started reading it on set. I loved all the effects, I love all the sets. I liked the costumes, I liked the music, I pretty much liked the characters. They were very inspired by Wizard of Oz, but also its own twist. Really wonderful. I was confused the entire time. I want the script so that I could study it. <laughs> and that's that's it for now. Alright, I, I don't know if I like this movie. I don't think... It's even meant to be entertaining or aesthetically pleasing. The movie felt like the equivalent of hearing nails on a chalkboard where all of the sound was shrieking. It was just people yelling and then dubbed over yelling. And I, like that's, it just it just felt like I was listening to static and I felt uncomfortable the entire time, which this is a horror movie. And in a sense, this is creating a very visceral reaction. It, it made the hair on my arm stand up. And, you know, if, if we're talking about something as art, the fact that this movie made me uncomfortable really means it succeeds as art. But as far as entertainment goes, I don't know if I enjoyed this experience. Uh, I did like some of the stuff... Uh, one one of my uh, when it comes to the indie stuff, I enjoyed the sets where everything was obviously handmade, but the dog with his stack of papers with like frowny faces on them, I'm like, okay, this is too cheap. This is literally no effort at that point. So I was sort of hit or miss with some of that. I honestly, it's this is a tough movie to review because it's so art house and so bizarre. This is this is a fever dream for sure. Wigwoof is a, is an actual madman. He belongs in an asylum. This is a fever dream. Uh, I'm not going to deny you in that. It is a fever dream. It is I feel the same way as I felt with the Mario Bros. It's the same thing. And if you're interested in this type of like for our viewers, if you're interested in this type of movie, the review, I would say, it's it's an acid trip with Wizard of Oz, Cross McDonald's, going into Alice in Wonderland with religion in it, and as you said, now I lost my train of thought. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, all right, so I I, I want to point out uh, if we're talking about who we're recommending this for. You have to be into art movies. You have to be into weird artsy shit because uh, this is nothing against Wigwoof, but this, and, and he has to know, there's no way that this is ever going to appeal to a general audience. People are going to look at this oh, no. and be like, this is fucking trash. This is this is absolutely oily trash, and they're going to turn it off immediately. Yeah, no. I know, but for like my art artsy friends, for the directors and writers that follow us. If you're a hipster, you'll love this. Yep. If you're someone who has ex 
experience drugs, you'll like this. <laughs> I I don't know what the I'm I'm confused. I don't know what to make of this movie. Uh, there were certainly some themes, uh, the Catholic nonsense, the abusive relationship, and what we're gonna have to bleep the theme of suicide. And it just it feels almost scatterbrained in the sense of like what the message was. Because I don't think I got any message from this. I could rewatch this a few times and maybe dissect it and analyze it. Right. But I'm not going to. Because <laughs> I did, it's, that's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. It, it is exhausting. It's exhausting. If if there had just been one theme, which okay, maybe that would be a little bit more ham fisted. Maybe that would be less artsy. I feel like I would have received this better had it had one sort of theme, and I'd be like, okay, well, this is what this meant. This is you know, it's about death or it's about guilt. Uh, there's definitely self like the the whole self guilt arc of Dorothy is certainly a huge part of this movie and if we had like maybe just focused on that without bringing in some of this other weird stuff i could i think i would have gotten more out of it as it stands i'm just confused mm, i this is this is a very 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 artsy art deco film it's not gonna appeal to everyone but i will say the gore was fun and i will i would recommend this to i think i think this has a potential to be a cult film for a niche type of group most definitely there is something in this specifically psychologist i think would be very intrigued with this film because one thing we all kept saying is that this feels like men mental illness because died self-harm gaslighting, narcissism, bullying, you know, those are things that are essentially like even dealing with yourself, like who you are is things that really um screams mental illness. Yeah, I think the crux of this movie was Dorothy killing the green uh the wicked witch and feeling guilt for it and then uh, Toto was sort of like a psychopath and he kept lording that over her and saying that she was a shitty person for having killed the Wicked Witch and and sort of um, I, I don't know what that term is like it's it's certainly some sort of abuse where I don't know I, I'm, I, I'm out of my league here I was, I've been drinking all night because I'm like oh this is going to be just some crazy nutso movie and now I'm trying to like relate it to serious mental illness and toxic psychopathic behavior i don't know uh make of it what you will do you want to yeah. give us your opinion Lindsay? uh yeah actually i do all right i'm gonna try and make this as youtube friendly as possible because i realize that there are some topics that are uncomfortable for a lot of people to talk about but i do appreciate wigwolf and it, it's because as somebody who has sort of gone down a path of having a history of very poor mental health without getting too in deep in depth about it uh he's not afraid to conquer some uncomfortable topics so that we can actually have a conversation about this while at the same time kind of making it playful and i also appreciated how seriously they actually took the hotline remark they added the hotline phone number in there so you know, it wasn't entirely a film of just like mocking people with mental illness. I agree, and yeah, it, you know, it's it's actually it's it's kind of a it's it is sort of frustrating that that is a topic that you just can't discuss on YouTube because it is yeah agreed. Uh, it it really is a topic that deserves you know serious discussion because it's a, a real and serious issue in a lot of people's lives and in the country and right. Yeah, it, it sucks to have to pussyfoot around that, but uh, do you have any other uh, comments? I personally enjoyed it, and I'm probably going to go back and rewatch it, because like uh, Bubble had mentioned earlier, you can watch this film multiple times and catch something new every time, because it was so... What how do you, What was the term? Art house, I think? Yeah, art house, art deco. Yeah, art deco. I mean, there is just so much going on that can be a little confusing, right? But I think I think this might be... 
a film that is sort of the camera lens is like sort of like the eyes of a maniac with multiple personality disorder, possibly. I, I think that might be what's going on a little bit here. Could be a couple of other angles that I'm unsure of, but I don't I don't want to go full YouTube rewind because that's like the most hated YouTube video on the platform. Yeah, I, th I, I think you're right. I think honestly, I think they even get anything out of this movie. You probably need to watch it at least twice. And honestly, my, my one complaint is that I feel like the Wizard of Oz themes were actually... You could have done more with that. The, the Cowardly Lion and the Tin Man were really only in there for the spaghetti party. The wizard sort of came and went immediately. And I, I'm a fan of the Wizard of Oz, honestly. It's probably the most famous movie of all time. And if you're going to use the namesake of Wizard of Oz, I think... I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of, of those characters included, but I don't know. This I, I feel like I'm out of my league trying to talk about this movie. I'm I'm so confused. Yeah, so this movie is really interesting because it like also it has a lot of innuendos about sin, specifically what Catholics consider sin. And then um, I I'm not a Catholic, so I wouldn't really know too much about that religion. Um. But I think it's also like what I'm I'm seeing and what I feel. It's very. It also not only does it talk about uh, mental illness issues, but also targets like cult behavior and social. Like again, I would recommend this to psychologists and again artists and people who are in the industry. You need to have an eight-year medical degree in order to understand this. Is what we're saying. Yeah. Yeah, or a therapist, or someone who's studying it. I think that would be interesting. I would be very curious to see what a therapist, psychiatrist would think and say about this movie. That's one thing that I'm very curious in, as well as someone who's very involved in the Catholic religion. I would be curious in that as well. A therapist is going to prescribe 30 milligrams of Thoracine immediately. <laughs> yes. This... Uh, wow. That's all I can say about this film. Wigwoof. Wow. Yeah, we, we enjoy you, Wigwoof. Keep making shit. This was pretty cool. Uh, even though we're, I'm personally left bewildered. Like, right here, like, all these purples and reds. I love that. Uh, I love the... I love the style of the movie. As for as for what I walked away, I don't know what I got from it, but I'm a pretty dense person, so <laughs> I'm, I might not be your target audience. Uh, but I I did. I'm glad I watched it. I wouldn't watch this again, but I'm glad I watched it. This is a disclaimer. Big Daddy Warbucks's comments about what a doctor would or would not prescribe is not a diagnosis. <laughs> True, he is not a certified. A certified psychiatrist <laughs> or doctor. Yeah, w Wigwoof's gonna comment on this video. I'm actually on 30 milligrams of Thorazine a day. How did you know? <laughs> I mean, I see why you felt really uncomfortable. The, the audio was intense. It was very uncomfortable. I am someone who loves this art. Uh, whoever the artist wa was, which I'm assuming was Wigwoof and some of the cast members. I love this a lot. I love the Wendy. I just want to say right here, so she puts this, the barbed wire around her. I always wonder if that is an allegory to the crown of thorns that Jesus wore. I also feel like there were a couple of Nirvana references in here, but that might be me going so far out of the box with this movie. You've been talking about Nirvana this entire movie for some reason. I have no idea. This film did give me because I reference acid trips a lot and and this like gives me MGM vibes for sure. MGM? So yes, it is a uh, electro electronic kind of band and they do electric feel specifically. Oh, MGMA. A yes, thank you. Thank okay, you. Okay, yes. MGM is a is a movie production company and I'm like ha <laughs> <laughs> ha ha I pulled a bubble. Yeah, I would I would say check this out. The fans the fans of this podcast, uh, you know, we do yes. we we support independent film. We love it. Please buy a copy of this. Support Wig Wolf. Yes. Follow him on Twitter. Let me uh He's he's at Wigwolf on Twitter, so check that out. 
I this might be him here. Uh, this picture, I think. I actually, I believe it is because he had another picture of him before, and it looks like the same person. But yeah, Woof Woof, uh, keep it up, man. Keep on, keep it on. We we love you. We love this movie. Uh, I'll I'll be getting a copy. All right. So I do want to point out, uh, being in the in this type of industry, this is how you do an indie film. You really do. Uh, you just the glories of being indie is creative freedom and wigwoof is that freedom and that's why i love it i had artistically a fun time in all the spectrums so thank you for letting us have it go watch it it is released in 9 11 it's released today if you're listening to this the movie is out go check it out link below <laughs> that's all we have to say <laughs> All right, I, dude, I gotta go. I, I, I gotta go to the emergency room right now. I've got blood pouring out of my nose, yeah. and I have a migraine. Oh gosh, yeah. So I'm I'm exhausted from watching this, and and it's something. It's a topic that it's a film that I could consistently talk about. And I, as as an artist myself, as not a director but as an actress, I respect him as a director, and I. He does have a lot to work on, but it's good visually, and the story is interesting. Keep doing it. Take care, comb your hair. Bye! I just, uh, all I can think of now is Wigwoof on set. Your your line is, I took a pee-pee in the poo-poo cup. Okay? <laughs> and action. All right. Bye. Bye.